motion to call the town board workshop of uh, July 11th, 2013. Order, please. There is a form on the screen. The, uh, second. Second. <laughs> Salute the flag. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag. Of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. A moment of silence for the military serving in the world, out of this, out of this country and around the world. Thank you. The emergency exits are on your left, our right, and the rear. <coughs> Roll call, please. Councilman Weaver here. Councilman Prody here. Supervisor Flood. Yes. And noted that Councilwoman um, Pitzelberger and Councilman Doyle are absent. I got a uh, text from uh, Gretchen that she's on her way. Oh. She'll be late. Okay. Good public comments. Any public comment? difficulty over the master plan. We were advised that the master plan has no validity. It is only an advisory item. And yet it has been used numerous times against or for other people. Now it is no longer in effect. So, what master plan? Big pardon? The, what what com the town comprehensive plan? Yeah. Okay. That's what the attorney said. Your attorney? No. Your attorney. And I'd like to ask if. A situation arises and a decision has been made, does that not constitute a form that you would carry on with all the subsequent things that come before, say, the planning board? It doesn't set precedence. What do you say about the comprehensive plan? Again? The attorney for the planning board advised us that. Advised who? The planning board? The planning board and the people that were present at the meeting on the second that it was only an advisory piece of paper. It had no validity. Well, okay. And. Well, I was just asking if in the process something is decided, does that not set precedence for the other situations, similar situations? We have to find out. I think it's a living, uh, they're going to answer it tonight, but I think it's a living document, so I don't know. Uh, I think it can be moved and changed and so on and so forth, a comprehensive plan. But no, yeah, it, it should be updated on every five years, sure. so it's it's time anyway. Right. You always should be looking at it. So. It's like a budget. <laughs> okay. I'd, I'd also like to ask about, the, I know that you're going to be discussing the rail trail tonight, or it's on the agenda. And if you, I would like for you to, to table it at this time 
but if you see fit to proceed with it, then I would like to formally form file for a permissive referendum. For the extension of the rail trail? That's correct. Stan Whitehead, uh, Mina Highway Superintendent for over 19 and a half years. Uh, I think I do a pretty good job. One of the things I do, I make sure everything is safe. I've been here for 19 and a half years. We've never been to any courts for a lawsuit. Uh, last meeting I heard <coughs> Plug's attorney say that my measurements for the Mechanic Street parking wasn't correct when you had the public hearing. So I went down measured it that night. I went down there again tonight. My measurements are right on, 100% right. It's 60 feet from the crosswalk to the telephone pole, from the crosswalk to the end of the curb is 113 feet. And Bill, you said that 343 is the same width as Mechanic Street. That's my surveyor so. Well, your surveyor's wrong. I measured it tonight, you see me. It's 42 feet, Mechanic Street is 36. So if we got 36 feet, you allow roughly 10 feet each for parking on both sides. So that's 20. So that leaves you 16 feet for travel lane in the middle of an intersection, which it, that's not enough. No way is it enough. And I heard that now you want to put a compromise and put handicapped parking there. Well, that's one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. There's not enough room for parking. Now you want to put handicapped people there. Where are they going to get out? Going to put ramps on the ramp, uh, on the curbs. How are they going to get over the curbs with a wheelchair? Go down the road with a wheelchair? Oh, I said there's no handicap parking on the street anywhere. So why do you need it there now? What? Why do you need it there then? Put it anywhere you want it. No, you put can't. Anywhere. American Disability Act says it is special uh, consideration for any design is having the access aisle level with the parking space. Page you know, I don't care what you do with the parking. I, I could care yes, less. Yes, you do. You're out there screaming, yelling at me, calling me That's names. Right. Like, that better not ever happen again. I'm telling That's you right. to your face. That's right. You don't treat me like that. You can't talk to me. No, you, you scream. You can't I mean, even you call talk me to me. Names. You don't call me names. I'm telling That's you right, right. now. Yeah, you know, well, you make it. Uh, yeah, that's right. You make a big hero out of yourself in the media. No, you be the you big hero on the ground. You don't. You can't talk, talk to me anymore. either. You start swearing at me. Come talk to me. Why are you screaming at me? Why can't Why you come me? talk to me at a regular everything. meeting? We talked about a compromise. Nothing is settled. But you've been here. There's been 17 people left this town hall. I bet 95 percent is because your mouth. That's right. You don't treat me like that. I'm telling you that. You don't treat me like that either. Well, you got treated good. Yeah. Uh, Bill McGee, I'm a uh, business owner on Mechanic Street. I have a concern with the parking and the in and out of 343 to Mechanic Street. Uh, I witnessed yesterday, I was coming back after a test drive, a truck was trying to turn out of Mechanic Street on the 343. Also coming in was one of Judge Manning's tractor trailers. The truck, there was, there was, also, there was no cars parked on either side. Uh, um, Mr. DeSillo's truck had to back up back out of the intersection so Judge Benning's truck or trailer can get around the corner. In that case, if there was a car on the side by closing corner, he would have creamed it. Okay. We've also had an issue before I brought up to Bill and a few of the other people down on the corner looking at the parking about we have a bus stop there on the corner. The school does. And uh, we had one instance where a driver stopped to pick up kids. The kids had to walk between two parked cars on the corner, which is very unsafe for them. They had to come over the curb and walk between the cars. Also that very afternoon, we had a bus turning in Mechanic Street from 343, coming from Sharon's side, that went into the intersection. There were two cars parked on both sides. The bus driver had to back back into the intersection, which is a no-no for New York State and Bus Drivers Association. 
He was going up Mechanic Street. What was that? The bus was turning into Mechanic yes. Street from Sharon's side. From Sharon's side, yes. <clears throat> My question is, why can't they go beyond the corner? Why do they have to stop? This right was there? not a stop then. This driver was just turning in there with two cars parked on either side. And it was two a two cars parked. A Weaver Tech school bus? A Weaver Tech school bus. These all happened in one he, day and the and same day. couldn't day. make the corner from it the Sharon no, side? No, had a backpack out in the intersection. This is really concerning to me, you know. I'm not here to see, you know, fight against anybody, but it's become very unsafe in that corner. Ever since those curbs were put in there. Yeah, that curb. They said they put the curbs the in the to make everything safer for the community. It's done nothing but headaches and made things just unsafe for the community. For 35 years, we shared that parking lot. Cozy Corner, myself, whoever was in that building shared parking lot. And then they've gone and really done a nasty job about it. So, but I'm very concerned yeah, about Yeah, but that has nothing to do with the curb. I, I disagree. Yeah. I believe that's what created a lot of this problem. I think no, this, this Reddle, curb. Reddle signed a lease with Dollar General with 30 parking spaces. They could have had the 30 parking, but the planning board and the town and the town here made them put it in the there. County. The county made it put no, it in there. No, the county didn't. That's just a suggestion for that is. The county mm -hmm. never made them do anything. I think it's made it safer, to be honest with you. Oh, I know, I disagree. I've been over there for 35, over, almost 37 years now. We, had, we had someone, we had Sue Gregory here who said, uh, had the same problem. There's nothing safe about that intersection any no. way you look at it. No. I've been there for over 37 years. We never had an accident on that corner until now. But there, it was busy, people turning in and coming around in that corner. You know, okay. turning in Mechanic Street, and then turning around in Sears and coming out in the same spot. So that was not safe. So I could see why the initiative was to do a curb there, but that's not safe either. It that, really, no. it's not, it doesn't work. That entire parking lot is a joke. Yeah. It well, just, that has nothing to do with us. That's between the Well, no, it does, really, no, because you want to create this parking on both sides of it. So it has something to do with the town. But you that know? parking lot was done by the landlord and the town. Forced to do it. No. Oh, yes, it was forced to do it. There's four so much to do it. The 30 parking spaces? Oh, the 30 parking, they could have had those without creating this curb or any of the other no, landscaping. They couldn't have. Oh, yes, they could. Yes, they could. We've already, they've been out and measured it. They didn't have to do that curb. If you let them just park along the building like we were used to, and then back another 10 feet, you could have had plenty of parking. People could have come in and out, in and out, no problem. So the place to argue this was the planning board. That is an issue that was dealt with. Right. Okay, I agree with that. Plan. That's not the town board's jurisdiction. We Safety now have is. the jurisdiction of parking, so that's what we're handling is the right. parking and with the existing situation. And since that so curb was put in with this parking situation really came to light. You have to consider the, same the whole situation. But it's a very, uh, it should be no parking on either side. And, and then there's another thing. I'm, I'm hearing in the wind that you have 44 parking places for your business. I hope that doesn't include my parking. You have no parking yourself. I park on You're both You're on the town property, right? What's that? How, 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 long, how much property do you own there? I own Rialto Street. You do? Yes, okay. I do. I think they counted 44 on, the, on 343. Where? 343? From a red light all the way down through? I think so. To the health center? No. I think so. I don't know where they are. You don't know where they are? It's your business. They're, uh, they're on 343. There's, there's 44 parking spaces, I think, if they measured it all out. Really? On, on both sides. On both sides. Yeah. yeah. So possible. that means that your parking plan for your building doesn't include parking spaces in the area, the unsafe area. Isn't that correct? No, I think it does. No, it doesn't. Huh? No, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. You listen, I, could, I don't care. If you want to put no parking signs up, go ahead. I've told you that before. We've been going around and around and around, around with this yeah, thing. Over a year. Over a year. Well, why but was your lawyer here? That's fine, because I can't, because I hired her to represent me. And she'll be here again. I don't care. Do what you got to do. If you want to put no parking signs up, if you're anti-business, go ahead. That's I'm exactly what, that's exactly what, in me and my mind, that's what you're doing. So, it is. It's a safety issue. How many people have to come here and talk about safety before it gets through your head that it's a safety issue? I, I spoke to Emergency issue. Services, which does negotiate that on a regular basis in emergencies, and I understood it would be fine to put even up to two cars on the Cozy Corner side, but nothing on the, on the Dollar General store. 
sign. So you're right in the middle of our bus stop. That's what I understood. Well, you can move the bus stop. That's it's not just as easy thing. just to move a bus stop. Well, it's well the problem is, I, t I talked to Judge Mann, and he said if we backed up two spaces on the, the curb side, he could make the swing with one car on, the, on my side. So you're, or, talk, so you're talking on the curb side, so you're talking about behind the, the, behind the telephone pole, back to where you park. Well, whatever the, the distance is, I don't know, whatever it is, yeah, back from there. Well, the report from Morris Associates said no parking on either side. Well, you, it's fine. The, the no, gentleman here argued with fight over it. It doesn't make sense. You know, no, you, but the, you the know, board voted to it compromise. It comes down to the decision having happens. given up the space for the raised sewer system, the raised septic system, right. and it's the same thing behind the the day nursery. You know, the back in the kitchen. If we had to do that all the way along, there would only be parking in the street. So, you know, it's, it's been compounded over the year, but I do think that that curb cut projects too far into Mechanic Street. And if it were not there, we'll see that it would was, be easier. That was put in by the planning board down here. I understand. But it is there, there and so we it. need to deal with it. Right. But what my concern is, I'm not anti-business or anything else. I agree, we all should work together. Yeah. But this is a very unsafe spot, very unsafe. And I, being on the school board too, I don't want to have any of my drivers from the school district have any problems out there. Or some kid gets hit coming across out into the intersection. But my question to you is, can't the bus pull up further to take on kids and Maybe let Maybe I should kids? let Jerry talk. Jerry's our, our uh, highway yeah. <coughs> to attend the school. How you doing? Jerry, uh, I've been I've been with the school for as a head bus driver for almost five years. Uh -huh. um, some of the, some of the problem and, and listen, you know, I don't take this wrong. I have no interest in a mean. What I have interest in is, is student safety. Okay. Um, the, the problem is uh, our buses are 40 feet long. Okay, 40 straight feet. They don't bend. They don't turn like tractor trailers. Tractor trailers you can turn differently. Um, so when we are turning. Can I move the bus stop? Yeah, I sure could move it up, but the problem is you still have kids walking in and you're gonna have kids walking to get to that bus. So you're gonna have kids walking, you know, the, the, the sidewalk, you guys pull over and park in front of the sidewalk. You have the curb, you have cars parked in back of the curb. So now you got kids walking between all that stuff to get to the bus. Okay, question before you even ask, can I stop the bus on 343? Very, very dangerous. No. Two years no. ago, we had a bus that we were rented no, there no, by, a no, 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 by, no, by a truck no, with a truck no, no, load no, no, of no. heavy equipment behind it. That's bus 100. I don't know if you guys that remember that. We're not looking okay. to no way. stop so, the So, I mean, my, my concern is student safety. If you guys, you guys need to come up with a way to address that issue. You know, I, if you own the business there, you know, I understand that too. Uh, I was a business, I, I ran a restaurant for 25 years. Okay. But couldn't the bus pull up? My, my, let me just one thing. As far as the business, if your if your product is good, they're going to come. Uh, it doesn't. Two or three parking spots is not going to hurt your business. It really isn't. Okay, I, I was in there. I was in the business, so I know. So you know, I, could, could the bus do what? I'm sorry. Could it uh, pull up further on Mechanic Street? I can pull the bus up further on Mechanic Street. That's not the problem. Does it? That's one does part it, of the problem. Sure, I can solve that part. But the yeah. problem is, my students still have to walk to get to that bus. Where do but they come from? The corner of 343. There. There's a sidewalk. Don't they use it? <coughs> yeah, there's a there sidewalk. There's a sidewalk. But With cars a curb that protects them from the moving vehicle. But cars park above the sidewalk. The sidewalk goes in back of the parked cars. And then you have the curb where there's cars parked on this side of it. So, in other words, you got cars parked here, mm -hmm. you got the sidewalk, mm -hmm. and then you got cars parked above the sidewalk. So, I think so. they should pull out of that whole busy intersection because we know it's a dangerous intersection. So, why choose that we, corner that we already know is a dangerous intersection with or without parking? To do cars? what? At, to pull your bus further in and we beyond can, the parked cars, beyond the intersection. We can do that, but so I think you're missing a point. We can do that. I can pull mm -hmm. my bus up further. That, that's not a problem. Okay, yeah. so let's get past that. Right. Yeah. But the kids still have to walk from. Uh, the corner of 343 to get to the bus. On a sidewalk. Where's the sidewalk? The sidewalk parallels Mechanic Street, so they walk on the okay. Mechanic okay. Street okay. to but get to the bus, and then they board the bus. Just, where it's just listen safe. to me for a second, okay? You have parked cars in front of the sidewalk that pull over the sidewalk. Okay, so now you got cars backing across the sidewalk. 
So if one of those little kids are behind one of those back that cars that are backing out, they're gonna get run over. So why don't they pull beyond the parked cars? I don't think she's getting beyond. beyond. The kids, students still have to walk behind cars. They still, if I pull up, they still have to walk behind. Don't you put out your stop sign, the flashing lights, so Absolutely. no one, no yeah, one can move. That's how the ball's going down to 343 had flashing red lights on. Yes. Here, here's the case. This year alone, this year alone, I've had 85 cases Get out of, the parking area. Go of cars blowing through my red lights, blowing through my bus's red lights. Not just here on 343, but I'm talking about district-wide. I've had 85 cases that I've sent to all of them. That where cars have gone through the reds intersection it's park cars okay yeah. we've all oh. admitted that it's a dangerous intersection yeah. right. we have a dangerous intersection with no parking signs right so don't we need to have no parking signs not i don't think all this i think you could allow some parking i i, I don't here, see why here's here's what i see in other towns i have i have towns that have no parking from here to the corner you know i see it a lot in a lot of different towns and a lot of different districts that i've been in so i don't know how you want to address that i don't know how many spots you want to do. I know if you take this into consideration, my boss is 40 feet from nose to back. Um, if you have two cars right now, and you're right, the curb did create a lot of problems there because you, before that curb, cars were parking off. They were, you know, they could get off the road, so there, there was space there. But now you have two cars parked there, that narrows that lane down a lot, a lot. So. You know, and I don't know. I don't know what your measurements are. I didn't measure it. These guys have measured it, but you know that 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 narrows it down. <coughs> and I, like I said, the bus don't bend like a tractor trailer. You can you can turn a tractor trailer. They they, they have a lot more turning radius than my bus does. So that you know. Well, we need to find a solution for sure. Yeah. So, Jerry, right. and, I mean, I'm not here to hurt anybody. You know, we just need to get get to the bottom of this and make it safe. Jerry, and even if you moved, even if you moved the um, the end of the bus at, I guess, the beginning of where the cars start to to park above the sidewalk, right? So the bus would physically be preventing them from backing up. I mean, because even uh, no matter what we do about parking, it, it seems that you're saying you know, we can't that there's no way to pick up the right. child without having the child cross beyond, behind parked yeah, vehicles. There, there isn't any way. I mean, it's going to happen. Yeah, we try to, that's why we park where we park. Hopefully, it tries to block some of it. But then what you got now, and, and it's all, it all has, you know, this all started when they, especially when Dollar General went in, very busy there, cars coming in and out, and they don't, I've already had three cars blow the reds coming out of there, I mean, right through the red lights. It's just lucky the kid wasn't crossing the street because they would have got hit there. On Mechanic Street? Yeah. Yeah. Blow well, right through red lights. But even, even and having. I, you know, and it's been, re I've reported it. Even having the bus backed up so it's essentially in front of that driveway. Um, what, what driveway are we talking about? You know, here? where the cars are brought up, parked above the That's sidewalk is essentially like having a car parked in a driveway at a house, except, you know, I think yeah. there's eight cars there. But even if you had the bus backed up so it was going from the sidewalk by the telephone pole well, see here, yeah, forward, we that's not acceptable. Here's what we try to do. We try to get, you know, when, you, when you're looking at bus stops, you try to get away from, as much as you can away from intersections or away from the main, main roads. So, right. so that's why we don't stop on 43. So when we do stop at Mechanic Street, we do pull up some. So yeah, I could, you know, it's not a problem for me to pull the bus ahead further. It's, it's, my problem is now I got students walking in and out of there, and that's what really scares me. You get a little kid walking behind one of those cars, and, like and, and believe me. But you're from backing out because your physical bus right, is 40 I, feet. They if if cannot I, back up. They it, can't move. Right. right? If I, I can, I hate to get closer to the intersection. Because you ever, you, and you've been there, you've been there. Well, I mean, we'd prefer those guys it to be those further there? from the intersection, but you're saying that yeah, you're in a, you're it's in a, difficult you're, you're because the cars situation are there. there. So I'm trying you know? to figure out how to I mean, resolve. I, I, can, I can go, if I move back, then you're too close to the intersection. If you move up, then you got kids walking. You know, it's really crazy there. But kids are still walking behind the cars. They're going to walk behind those cars. Now they're doing it. What's that? Now they're doing it. Some of them do, walking in and out of there. It's, that's why I you say You only have two. You have two. What's that? You take, pick up two kids, right? Kids there, right? Well, I think this year we're going to have some more right there now. Oh, yeah? 
I think there's some moving into that other apartment building. There. Are they accommodate, accompanied by their parents at all? They're supposed to be. Are they always? Yeah. That's another issue that we face. Yeah. Are they always? No. That's another issue that we face, and we fight that every day. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you wouldn't believe some of the stuff we go through, but yeah, we fight that every day. Yeah. So, as well. But that's, you know, that's what I have to say. Hopefully, you guys can come up with some sort of solution to it. I don't want to see anybody get hit or, or run over. You know, that's my main concern. Students yeah, well, I'm glad you, you came and talked about the bus because I was yeah. curious, you know, what our options are on, on moving forward with the bus. Everybody has a driveway to their house. I mean, you must yeah. let off kids, so kids in front of driveways. We do. And, you know, that's, that's, we, we do. We let yeah. off kids in front of driveways. The issue that you face here is all the other traffic. Most of the houses that you're letting off in front of, you don't have intersections to deal with. You know, you, they're just regular stops. Uh -huh. um, and unfortunately, you know, I've changed, we, we have changed the number of stops. We've worked with people to change other stops. Um, unfortunately, this is a tough one. I mean, and, and I went to the Board of Education. I didn't have any more solutions. You know, I mean, I made a call to the state. Uh, I've had state. Out, I've had the state out on other stops, you know, putting signs up, all kinds of things. Uh, I just didn't have a solution for this. So I went to the Board of Education. I said, look, I need you guys to help me come up with some sort of solution to this. Mm -hmm. But mid-block, so. there are no cars parked along there. There's a bridge, there's there's very right. few driveways that starts petering mm -hmm. out. Isn't there a 40-foot stretch there where you can pull mid-block on Mechanic Street to avoid all the intersection, all the parked cars, and the emergency vehicles that may or may not be coming out of Mechanic Street? I mean, can I? it just doesn't seem well, unlikely you know, that you couldn't solve this by pulling beyond. I, I, think, I think probably what you need to do is go down and really see what I'm talking about. I but know I think that's missing, well. I think I you're missing a well. picture because I can pull all the way up mechanic. I can pull up by the rail trail, but they still got to walk from point A to get to point B. That's fine. There's a sidewalk. We repaired it. It's in good repair. Okay. Let's people back out. People back out. A lot of people, you for sure say how many people blow by the red lights. So there isn't a 40 foot stretch of carless driveway. In the by, so, on Mechanic Street, I believe there is in front of DeSillo's a very long road frontage, and we planted five locust trees. He could park there. Walk from point A to point B to get to the bus. The, it's Some a side little walk. Little kids, walk. Little, little kids, you know, like kindergartners, first graders. Oh, I can't believe they're unaccompanied. They're walking through the oh. intersection all by themselves. They're walking around the intersection, yes, to that bus stop. And this is the only bus stop where a child has to cross a driveway. Cross a driveway? Yeah to get to the bus stop from their home, accompanied or unaccompanied. Cross a, you mean cross an intersection? No, I mean cross a driveway. Essentially, this is the, it's a very short pretty, driveway, pretty, but it's parking pretty, on the. Pretty, I mean, we have kids that walk, but nothing to that extent, nothing near an intersection, nothing where it's that busy. Uh, and you know, you're welcome to. Maybe we should. No, I understand about the, the intersection, right. but I'm, and, and, that, I mean, that's, that's and we do have a sidewalk for children to walk on. Right. My question is, do children walk across from a, on a sidewalk and, and pass over driveways in any of the bus stops? Do they have to do that? They walk All 343 they do. Do they walk out and pass over? We have kids at crossroads, unfortunately. But Why they're here they're is not, to talk about three, not the a, intersection that's dangerous. Yeah, and the problems they're having that. with no, the buses. I understand. They're just, they're not, a, they're not a <coughs> We've got cars coming from, how many ways coming into that intersection? Right. You know, the that's, problem that's, is that's, the I intersection. Mean, we can talk about this all day. We can talk about other bus stops. But you've got a lot of cars coming in and out of that intersection. I, I do understand about the amount of traffic that goes right. through the intersection. What I was and, and just walking, asking about was and the, and the walking, walking on the sidewalks because I wanted to understand that better. I'm not a good drawler, but when you got a sidewalk here, if you don't mind, I'll show you real quick. I mean, you know, you, you got a sidewalk, you're, you're, I mean, okay, you got, you got a curb, okay, then you got a, a sidewalk, okay, and then you got the parking spaces over here. Right. 
Okay. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Right. Those people are walking up. Kids are walking up this sidewalk, and these cars could be backing out and back over. Could we I understand, and I understand that that's your concern. And my question was, on the rest of the route, are right. there any other places? Not, like not not where there's four or more, but are there any that are four or less where children have to cross over? Cross over a sidewalk like that. Cross no. over a driveway opening. No, not with cars like that. Not with, cars like that, no. not, not with a single one or a two? Oh, I mean, I think the well, what difference does it make? Yeah, the question is kind of unfair. I mean, let's face it, everybody, everybody here, every family owns a car. So if they're parked in the driveway, of course, their kid, you know, that they're in the house and they know. So that question is kind of fair. We well, don't that's, have anything like no, that. No, that's, that's like coming straight down your own driveway. I wasn't, right. I, that's, that's, I wasn't talking about that's that. That's what we have. Here. That's, that's what I have, basically. Do I have anything other? Do I have anything like this? Absolutely not. I, you know, I would be facing the same thing that I'm facing here. Uh, and if you want to look at no, I mean, safety, I just I don't know the route. That's why I'm right. asking. No, no, no. I do not have anything like that. At okay. All. And uh, if I did, I would be doing the same thing I'm doing now. All right. Uh, you, you're welcome to look at my safety record. 19A certified. So. I'm sure if you didn't have a good safety record, right, can we set a there? date where we can all go down, down there? Is that the kids walk? Mm -hmm. We're going down again. What? How many times have we been down oh, there? Right. Department well, of Depo I know. Right. Well, the board voted last month to uh, to uh, do something different. Yeah. They voted now, again. I, they voted I would have a suggestion. If uh, I'm if, not trying here, trying to do, I'm not trying to railroad anything here. No, we need oh, to. Board no, we need to have a compromise. Before. And what I'm suggesting is perhaps that you there are, would be a pathway me. somewhere that the kids could circumvent that corner and not walk behind the cars. Is there? way that they can get from 343 you know i mean if you guys can come up with a solution i think we have to come up with a solution my main objective yeah. here is safety you know if you can come up with a solution yeah so if it were they possible do. for the business owner to put a path in that comes off the sidewalk into that parking area in front of those cars and then back to the sidewalk that would be acceptable or not behind the property just why are we trying to rearrange the bus route when the problem is the safety of the intersection i think i think you guys need to talk about it and figure yeah. it out we will well, the bus route is a problem i think we all can agree and, and though that the intersection is dangerous right so we need to right. get further away from the intersection it, 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 it's need, safer right. mid block that's yeah. our I think we can all agree that it's safer mid block you know, it, rather than it, close it, to the intersection and i you know and i don't, I don't know how I mean, many cars it would take i don't know how many cars it would take but maybe you want to look at other towns and see how many car spaces they have from the red light or from the, their red light or from their intersection back so people can make turns without getting real congested. I don't know if it's a lot. I see some towns that have three or three cars back, you it's know, three car lines. 20 feet, I believe. Of one what is it? 20 feet back from 20 feet. the uh, Which is one space. One car space, one car length back from the intersection. I believe what our traffic can I, I mean, I, I guess what I would do is, is you know, have somebody take measurements. Uh, like I told you, my bus is 45 feet long. We've already done it. Right. Okay. Multiple times. All right. So, and I, and I don't know exactly. I mean, I could go down and, and tell you what kind of turning radius I need for buses by, by taking a few measurements. You know? Would you? I could do that. Would you get that information Absolutely. back to us so we would know what your your yeah. turn is yeah. on that? Yeah, I could do that. For you. That would be very helpful. But we also have to make it safe for anybody to use it, not just the buses. That's true. Well, I think, yeah, I and mean, I think by getting some of the traffic away from the intersection and parking from here to the curb, I think you would be able to make it a lot safer, yep. you know, but you, you've got to start somewhere. And, right. I, and I think cars parking right up. Uh, I was down there uh, this past week. No, it was a week before I was down there um, just, you know, doing some observations. And they, some of those cars were parking right up to almost up to three, up to 3.3. 343 yeah. was also mentioned to me. So, as the, you know, that's just as dangerous as people pulling right close to the intersection. But that's no parking. The There's no parking on that on 343. Still do it. I mean, it's posted. Thank but you. what it's we, posted. yeah, but right what now. we have uh, to look at is, I mean, the town is responsible for Mechanic Street. It's a town road. Ninety percent of the turns we make like that as bus drivers, you're you're 
your nose of your bus is pretty much going to be in the other the other lane on, on a normal turn condition. That's why I'm telling you now that when you start getting a lot of cars back up, when cars come out of man, those cars fly out of uh, the Dollar General coming out of there, and when they come flying out of there, you know, and, and if you got a bus that's halfway into that corner, and that next thing you know, you got a car. Here's what happened with the car bus that had to back up. The car refused to move. The car refused to back up. I don't know if they're, you know, I don't know what the, the deal was there, but my driver was stuck in between 343 and Mechanic Street. So we had, we had to make a move to get out of that situation. We don't, we try not to back buses up. New York State Law don't want you to back them up at all. Unfortunately, we do have to do a few different turnaround spots, but you know, so that's, that's where you run into a danger. So, all right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Okay, where do we go from here? Are we gonna wait longer? before we address this. Any suggestions? I mean, what is the compromise? Well, I think we could look at a, at a pathway so the kids are, I mean, that's one part of it, and then step the cars back from the corner. You know, I think put up some cones and say this is where it is, make a pathway for the kids to go in front of the cars, not in back of them but everybody who uses that intersection has a problem with it you have listened to sue gregory she almost had an accident there i mean yes, the, the problem is the she was distance. willing to say let's take a let's look at it let's make a compromise that works for everybody and i think it's out there so i think we need to go back and and take a hard look at it even though the uh, Department of Transportation has already said no parking on both sides, Morris Associates has said only because, no parking on both sides. Only because that curve intrudes on Mechanic Street and that's made it more severe. So we need to make a recommendation as to what should happen there. Absolutely. And so this has been going saying. on since October. So, I mean, right, because we just can't, can't, you just can't keep putting it off and putting it off well, and putting it off. we don't have the school buses right now, so it gives us a little breathing room to take a look at it. The school buses aren't the whole problem. No, the I problem know, is everybody who uses it. I understand. So we need to take a closer look. And I think we, we should. Well, what I don't understand is it's been a restaurant for 40, 45 years. Now, all of a sudden, because I own the building, it's an issue. It's an issue because of the curb cut has yeah. nothing to do with you. Right. Yeah. Wouldn't we'll matter who owned it. Those curb cuts I, I came think, out and caused would, the problem. I'll, I'll differ with you on that one. But we could make us. We could make it issue. We could make it fix it in a matter of minutes if we all meet there and get done with it. Yeah. If, but, but the raised system was a problem because that used to be a parking area. Correct. And now it's not there anymore. So that puts the cars at the edge. So it's a combination of all these things coming together at once. Yeah. Would you recognize? If you go to the podium. The only problem is the town's liability. You've been notified and it's informed me. But when you come down to it, there is no requirement for parking anywhere in this town. That was told to us by the attorney for the planning board. Okay. Any other public comment? Do you want to... It seems like a safe intersection. I, I appreciate that I can park... Podium. I, I missed a lot of the discussion, but um, I mean, I've, I've been able to use that restaurant, and, and but I end up using the, the Dollar General um, slot sometimes because of the lack of slope. And so I cross on the road, I, it seems safe enough to me. And you're supposed to state your name. Oh, yeah, hi. Devin Callum. Thank you. Did anyone else speak to emergency uh, personnel? Because I would. I thought that was part of the uh, difficulty was getting long fire trucks out of in and out of that and I assume that they would be as long perhaps as a school bus 40 feet or 45 feet long 
than the my one. understanding that two cars would be okay on the cur uh, cozy corner side and I would be willing to compromise further and say one car in front of the telephone pole would leave yet an, uh, a more generous than normal setback from that intersection given the kind of traffic that it takes in and out and hope that the school bus goes mid-block or beyond the busy congested intersection and get out from that dangerous situation. I'd be willing to go with that. Just go a little extra measure, put one car there and be done with it. That would be a compromise. That's if the emergency medical people are okay with that. But I offer to do also is to strike the curb around with yeah, lines, it gives the hash marks so, so they'll push the traffic out further. But I don't know if that's, I had Easy Street there, they said they would strike the, the curb, the corner. To keep people from making, well, from the parking corner. there, oh. so that would you know the one if you if you did allow one in front, then they would have a curb, you know, whatever striping would be from the from three four. You still need the, the no parking signs. Yeah, absolutely, right. and then put no striping, and then no I parking, to two, whatever we need I to get it. If we went two back, back. On, the, on the curb side, they should be able to make on the other side. If you went back two, maybe or whatever three cars back, you could make this way. Darlene and Victoria, what do you think about the single car parked in front of the telephone pole on the cozy corner side and no parking on Dollar General side? Does that would give Which you is what Vicky is 40 proposing. feet back versus the 20 recommended for a typical intersection. That would give you 42 clear, you know, if, if at 20 feet it's a parked car, then you've got 42 feet left versus a 20 foot. So, you know, it's a compromise. Mm -hmm. It is one car space, handicapped or no, it, you know, for somebody who's a little disabled and needs a little. I think you need handicapped accessibility. Well, that would so allow it's... them to use the driveway um, as parking, a ramp down to the sidewalk, essentially. The property is... owner would have to do a little bit more concreting or ramping there, I guess, but. Yeah, and maybe one of the tenants is in that perpendicular space, so that you may not be able to pull in there to have a handicapped access. Maybe not call it handicapped access, but just an easier access. I don't know. Would we have to flag it? You read the handicapped accessibility. What was the part that you thought we couldn't Well, provide? the handicapped spot has to be next to where they're going into the into yeah. the business according to the ADA well this is close to where the entrance is right it's, it's right close to the, the ramp because the ramps on yeah so I think you need a space the 343 there. side of the and telephone on the plant. other side I know Stan had his car or his truck parked very close to the edge and I measured it myself it was 20 feet away and that was way too close so you need at least 40 feet for sure with the parking space. The problem is it's very expensive to put in curbs that are level, you know, handicapped accessible. Well, we basically found that what low, they're saying, they have to be on the same uh, side right. of the street as the entrance. You can't have them across the street. Right. Well, I'm talking on the cozy corner side. Right. with it either accessible or not ideally we should deal with handicapped uh, at least one handicapped accessible parking space there and I believe that's a graduated uh, curb cut at that intersection right I think it is. yeah it doesn't have a, an, uh, a lip there mm -hmm. it's been graduated so I don't know what all would yet take what it would take to make the whole thing handicapped accessible, you know, given these, but I think it could be looked at. Yeah. Okay, what if we just thought about just having one spot there and then in future com converting that 
wind tunnels. Town road spot from regular parking to handicapped accessible parking. When we have when funds to do the proper ramp heights and I mean this is really Parks specific. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Yeah, I th I think painting on the on the curb itself is. I mean, when you go through there, you you have no idea what your turning radius is because there's no no lines that indicate you shouldn't be in that that area. So I think painting is is huge oh. with that. Plus the crosswalk is not even you can't even read the crosswalk. So if people were aware of where these boundaries are. They would drive more so carefully. So refreshing the paint on the crosswalk, adding yellow caution paint right. in the no parking zone, and then having the one parking zone, one parking space set back 40 feet from the crosswalk. And no parking signs and on both sides. Right. Well, well I appropriately think looking ones. historic no parking signs. <laughs> They are plywood. They are. Plywood. 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 <laughs> the media plywood, but in a you know, Victorian setting. Victorian <laughs> historic shape would be nice. Much better than. The, does that sound like something that's possible? Yeah, I think let's, by the next meeting, let's resolve it and, you know, get the lines, where the lines would be on this drawing. We need to do a resolution, create a local law, don't we? Well, let's get something in writing first. I mean, get yeah. this map get the plan. specific. Right. And then we and need then to substitute that language in, right? It's not a big deal. Substitute the new language. You There's substitute the new language, and then you'd have to follow the process right. for adopting the local law. Right. Um, and then have the public yeah. hearing. Right. Is Introduce that, it, have a public hearing, and then we could adopt it. Does that sound like something that's acceptable yeah, and to I think everyone it should go to do hand in hand with the school bus situation you know? well i don't think we have any jurisdiction over school bus no, stops no, no. we don't but i we mean no we don't it's a safe a safe pathway for i can't believe kindergarten kids walk that route by themselves i mean i guess times have changed but um i i thought we could talk school district did not allow any child to go unescorted or at least out of their parents' vision. I mean, I have no Until children, but I have friends who have children, yeah. and they get very disciplinary letters from the school if it's found that they have let their child go well, to the bus there unattended. There are a lot of components, and they all have to work together to make this reliable. Yeah. So. But this is something we could draft up and, and go to public I hearing part two. Well, we need to do the resolution and yeah. then set the public hearing to, for two weeks I think later. We need to lay it. Down. But with this concept, if there are no parking signs, if I might make a comment, please, Cheryl Morse, Town of Amenia. Sure, Cheryl. It's my suggestion that having done a lot of site planning design myself and knowing what a disaster the Dollar General parking lot itself has been, I would recommend to the board that you actually go out there with cars, with trucks, with the businesses and the emergency vehicles involved and actually do a reenactment of what could happen there because there, there are a couple of issues. Coming from 343, making that right-hand turn onto Mechanic Street, it's somewhat of a blind intersection. And if someone's going too fast, as some young people do, turning into that road, someone could get clipped pulling out of a parking place in front of the restaurant. It's happened to me. Or they could hit another car that's pulling out. Um, the sad part is I was there the night that a planning board member, Norm Fontaine, actually commented what a disaster that whole plan was. And I thought it was a very sad commentary that Nina Peake stated, well, she didn't shop there, so she had no idea. And yet it was our planning board that mandated that the Dollar General parking lot be configured the way that it was. It didn't work on paper. It doesn't work well in reality. And I shopped there, and I've seen it. 
So I think before you make a decision, you ought to actually go out and look and see what really happens when Judge Manning's trucks come in and out, when a school bus goes in and out. Close the road for a little while for, you know, or go out early some morning when there's not a lot of traffic. See if you can get people together to do that. See if it really works in real life. Because if God forbid there is ever a tragedy there, it is the liability of the town if a child is killed. And I don't think any of us want to see that. And I think taking those steps would be a very smart move. It'd take a little time, but I'm sure it would be in the best interest of everybody. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And I have gone out and done that with my truck, the, my big green commercial vehicle with Judge Manning's tractor there, followed by an ambulance. So I'm very much aware of what space there is there. And I've had several there. discussions with Judge Manning about the park. So we can get Judge there also if you'd like. Thank you. Any more other public comment? Uh, water department report, I see. Did we, did oh. we decide whether or Sorry. not we're gonna go ahead with having Ian spend time to do the resolution? I don't think so, because the resolution will be based on whatever plan we come up with. So you, I think you have to decide yeah. first what exactly what you're going to do. Yeah. And, uh, well, the proposal on the table is um, no wanna, parking 40 feet back from the curb. 42 feet. 42 feet back from the intersection on the cozy corner side. No parking at all on the Dollar General side. And no parking at all. At all on at the Dollar all. General side. Well, for what? The, at, at all on that side of the street? Or for, the for, on the for the section 113 that feet. The new curb, so it's yeah, it's 113, 113 feet. feet. Right. right. Okay. No parking at all there, and one spot at the 42nd foot to the 62nd foot on the cozy corner side. So 42 feet from the southern from the crosswalk. end of the crosswalk. From the cr southern end of the crosswalk to the telephone pole is 62 feet. So we're going to allow one car 20 feet parking in front from the pole towards the intersection. But you can't park any cars on the cozy side 42 feet from the crosswalk. From the southern, southern boundary, boundary of, the right. of the crosswalk. Yeah. Okay. So I, I and that you could no there. parking will be posted on both sides mm -hmm. on Mechanic Street. Historic. And we pay for the curb painting, so and that the curb be painted cautionary yellow to to emphasize the no parking zone, and that the crosswalk be repainted. To remind people to that's, use the that's a crosswalk. State, state. I think that's the same. No, state. Mechanic Street to Dollar General, Cozy to Dollar General across Mechanic Street. That's not us. I, I don't know. I think it's the state. Okay. Oh, it's state. Is it state? It's in the yeah. right away. Okay, so then I take back that last part. Okay. I think this is the right away that goes through there. So they, oh, they right. consider it part of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Thank you. I, I still would rather have cones put up and take a look at it and have have vehicles try it out. I think that's a good idea. All right. I mean, even uh, graphic standards has the radius for turning uh, for buses, for ambulances, for fire trucks. I mean, I think we need all that information there. And if it means putting a caution light, something that attracts attention on 343, I think, I don't think we're ready to do this right now. I think we need more information. I think we need to put all the pieces together to make it right. I, I still insist on that. So. Well, the traffic engineer, the DOT, said a blinking light is what you need to formally right. request That's what they there. Said That's also. what would make this a safer intersection. Yes, he did mention that. And it's yeah, when it we came. should request it. Just right. a, a blinking a light is not going to let a tractor trailer make a turn any better or any worse. If there's if the parking situation mm -hmm. isn't resolved. Oh no, the parking as well. But I think he, that was one thing he recommended. He's a traffic safety engineer. I didn't right. make it up. He 
he suggested. They're, they're not racing around the corner. I hadn't thought of it, but I think that is true. If you have emergency vehicles coming in and out of there, and they have horns blasting, a blinking light to add yet a greater precaution. Well, you could also, I think, would help uh, with overall safety. The, if, if the fire alarm goes off, you can turn like it to a, red. Like in Arlington. Right? They can turn it yes. off. So maybe that's something we should take a look at. Obviously, it is an issue. The issue I have too is also with the speeders. The speed, it's, it's horrible. You know, some woman the other day had to be doing 80, 80 miles an hour heading east on 343, past two cars on the right-hand side of Cumberland Farms, and was on the curb by the time she went past, was on the sidewalk by the time she went past Dollar General. Wow. And never stopped. And when they're late for that train, forget it. Anybody walks in that intersection, it's dangerous. It's very dangerous, across in 343. So what else are we looking at in addition to, um, we, uh, and in addition to Gretchen's proposal? Can I just add one more thing? We've also asked, asked for the, uh, Mary wrote a letter a month or so ago for um, the uh, new, new signs on 343 for the pedestrian crossing things. For that app for that permit. stop for pedestrian and cross well there's a homes. you know the the cones that we have are not right the ones yeah like the ones on 22 are. you have to have the signs now so we've asked for the permit to, to install them but we haven't have received the permit yet <coughs> and that's I, not going to slow I spoke down. with Leo on the on the, uh, the landscape plan and he said what would slow down the traffic on 343 is another crosswalk between the mid, library and mid block yeah. mid block but if you do that, you have to do a curb cut, and a curb cut is $25,000. You know, it's not inexpensive. We discounted that because we don't have $50,000 to put in two curb cuts. It would be an ideal thing, but we don't have enough money at this point in streetscape funds or otherwise to do a curb cut. It's quite expensive. Mm -hmm. And we don't have time to get the in DOT's permission to do that. But I think that is ultimately what long, needs to long happen. Long range, we need that. Yep. But those things you can't do in the local law, right? Because you're talking nope. about things on 343 right. Right. that you need either the county or the state. Um, 343 state, state road. Right. Right. So you need yeah, we're just talking mechanics. So we could ask, when we're asking the DOT to put in a blinking light or to consider that on 343, we can also ask for a mid-block. You know, it doesn't hurt to ask. So when they do make changes, they have the letter on file. It's worth a shot. Mm -hmm. Can you type a letter? Mm -hmm. DOT. So the uh, DOT. We'll get, I'll give you the Chuck uh, Walters is Chuck our Walters. engineer. When do you want to go down with cones and trucks? And hmm? when do you want to go there with cones and trucks and such? Um, well, I don't know if we actually physically need the vehicles there. Because comb, we could set up some cones and let the yes, if, if see. parking were here, you know, how much room would we have left, and could these vehicles make that turning radius? Monday morning sounds good. I do want to get a result. It's gone too long. Yeah, or you can't. You won't be there Monday morning. Why don't we do it Sunday morning? Say seven a.m. What time? Seven, because there's no traffic around there at that time. Yeah. Does that work for everybody? That. It has cool. to be a special meeting if we're all yep, it does. out there. We have time um, to notify a special meeting? Yes, it's we do. Thursday, 72 hours notice. Mary, come in, Mom? Yeah, I'll have her post it. Is it Public comment? I trust the cappuccino machine will be on. You're open at 7, right? No, we're closed. Did you come? Darn. Okay. No, we're open. Uh, uh, Sunday, what time? 7? 7, 7 a.m. Meet at the intersection of Mechanic Street and 343 on the south side. Okay, to move on? Mm-hmm. We all set? Water department. So then I'll hold off on. Please, I'm sorry. On yes. Okay. 
And Darlene, you'll bring the graphics standards measurements for mm -hmm. the for an 18 wheeler, a typical. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, building department. We all set. Um, I got a uh, letter, for email. You got an email today from John Fenton. I'll read it. Uh, dear town board, this morning, Mr. Bill Rohde, town engineer, myself performed a a structural inspection of the barn that the occupied people are occupying. He will, he will put uh, uh, together a descriptive report of what steps are going to be required to assure code compliance to the structure. ARC 38 are also in the process of hiring an engineer to address the structural deficiencies. After our report is complete, presently there are no open violations that Mr. Henry is dealing with in court. There are open there violations. Are. Oh, are open. You okay. said no. Mr. Henry's next court date is scheduled for July 23rd, 2013, at 7 p.m. The violations are as follows. One, allowing the use of an unsafe post and structure for occupancy. Two, non-removal of junk farm equipment. Three, manure too close to the water course, no containment. Four, prohibited, u pro prohibited use of the parcel, structure, and so on, et cetera, without town board approval. I will contact Ian McDonough for continuous legal support and direction. I understand the report will not be back until sometime next week. Right? Yeah, I so that's why I spoke to John this afternoon, right. and uh, Bill Rohde apparently is going to get him the report on the structural issue sometime next week. Did he give an estimate for how much that would cost? Our engineer, did he give any sense of how much how this much report would cost, would cost to, prepare the report? to prepare the report? No, I assume I, it's like a standard. I didn't speak to John structure. about that. Okay. Uh, Maybe John knows. I don't know. We, we should add that to our fundraiser, though. I'm going to talk, speak to John again on Monday. I can ask him. That'd or I can call. Or I'll, I'll call him. I'll, I'll ask. Thanks. So, if I could address. Okay. Um, do you want to have a discussion about this thing now with this, with him or no? Why not? It's up to you if you want to hmm? okay. open it up I'm to. Sure. All right. Okay. Right. Go ahead. Okay. Thanks for your time. Um, I'd like to appeal to your higher senses and find the common ground necessary to establish that we are on the right track. We've adapted and adjusted with each clarification, attending these meetings even when we haven't officially been on the agenda. And we believe we deserve the time it takes to attract the support and formulate the right way to move forward. The record reflects that clear and steady responses to each violation that has been brought to our attention has been addressed forthrightly and in reasonable time through the appropriate channels. Two of the four remaining relate to a third party not associated with the ARC. And we should be seeing headway from that soon, we're told. Uh, John Fenton is in personal touch and is getting weekly reports, so we're all keeping our fingers crossed. There are those who want to see us um, as a problem, um, yet a number of the assumptions underlying that are, are false. Um, there have been those who've personally been and with us and involved and know that the barn is a great central space to gather and meet, store our tools and work out of. We've got modest agricultural worker housing on both sides of the road. Uh, but what I'm asking for now, before you retreat into private session, uh, is that you save the effort and money of this town's resources by not pursuing additional charges against Mr. Henry at this time. We have shown that we are willing to work with you and to offer any effort, and any efforts to the contrary are counterproductive to this effort. It prevents us from having the conversations we'd like to be having. Uh, the one piece that we can address now is number four on that list, which was the prohibited use of the parcel or structure without the town board's approval. What I'd like is for this board to exhibit the good sense to pause, to evaluate what is the desired end result and the best means of achieving that end result. Perhaps one less costly than spending more of this town's resources against an 80-year-old pacifist, nonviolent activist and farmer who was brought before this town's court on charges that seemed a bit pushed through. And there's details I don't think we need to go into, but they do involve um, proper notification, um, documents with the wrong dates on the official document and referencing action that was supposed to be taken on the same date that the letter was received. Um, but I'm here to ask for a reprieve. For your review, the concerns of neighbors and concerned callers have been addressed and quelled every departmental inspection. 
we, we have had a chance to call each, we've had each department and we're in relationship and correspondence with each of those and I've made them available to John Fenton again today. Um, engineers and your own inspector have now reported that the barn is in good shape, it's not an immediate safety hazard and as soon as our report is done that, that the unsafe or number one on that list is, is, is one that we are confident will be dropped legitimately and in short order which would then allow us to begin the, the longer conversation about declaring our use in a way that is in accordance with this amazing, unique place that we're all, um, that we care so much about to be here. Um, okay, so the patience you have shown thus far in, in allowing us to catch up and become compliant with the best direction that makes sense for all parties involved demonstrates your commitment to the service of this town and not overlooking a very good opportunity to show how civic-minded solutions can be handled by working with the very best information, designs, and intentions. We're preparing to further the conversation about future use possibilities for our structures and the businesses um, relevant to the, to the operation with the planning department and other relevant bodies, uh, particularly going into the winter months and after a concerted opportunity to do non-emergency fundraising. For now, however, we are asking that you allow us to continue our agricultural use of the barn as we take the time to evaluate our options. Forcing a rushed answer can never be as natural or as authentic as one handled with all parties aware and involved in what choices are at play. Do you have a copy of our zoning book? Yeah. Do you, have you read it? I have, yeah. It's been quite a study. Uh, we, yeah. Okay, because the use that you're implying is not allowed there, so you need to look at the steps that you would have to take to be where you want to be. And does it make sense to improve the property if it in fact isn't appropriate there for the use that you are intending it to be? That's the question and concern that I think the town board has. Yes. Not, Why make improvements and follow down this route if in fact the intended use there will not allow it? Because it, it appears that you would need special use permit at minimum in order to do even part of the things that you're interested in. It's a single family residence area, so you can't really have, you know, operate it as a campsite or as a multiple uh, residence uh, or a cultural center or a educational facility. The slope is steep, there's wetlands there, it really isn't going to be something that is suitable for multiple housing. Uh, situations. Certainly not housing. I'm, I'm not into housing myself. Other folks have tried to push for camp or lodging facility. Um, recreational business involves four temporary housing dwellings and farm operations also involve seasonal housing and that's what there has been. That's what we've done. You're that's in a residential neighborhood. That's seasonal housing. You're in a residential in neighborhood. Suburban yeah. residential is right next to your property and you know you're rural residential so you need to look at the steps that that or the hurdles that the you hurdles. have to go through. They're, they're not steps, hurdles. they're First major. First of all, the, it just isn't appropriate there. You don't have it working well. You don't have septic system. The steep the slopes are too steep and there's Neither of those wetlands. are accurate, actually. There is a septic holding tank of 1,000 gallons and there is a, a well that's... But it's more the than that. The, the basic been, uh, problem given is the use. The use. That's, that's it in a it's, nutshell. It's a farm. It's always been used as a farm. You know, no, it has it. Actually, usage, actually, we've already that had to do that. If you've noticed, and John Fenton's confirmed this, we've had to completely reduce what we're doing, and a lot of crops have suffered as a result. That and building was a storage building. Season, it was not sense. a farm. Was never a farm. That building was a storage building. Never a working farm. There's always the future. We don't want you to have false hopes in going forward because I think it would be. You know, if things were to change, or you would be requesting a change, it would be in essence almost a spot zoning in a residential neighborhood. It's a huge hurdle. This comprehensive plan, you know, has the Hamlet Center in Wasaic is where the activity is, and it's you're out. Where the hip kids are at? Pardon me. It's where the hip kids are at. Wasaic, it's up and coming. People are making a point to go to Wasaic. We always envision Wasaic Hamlet as an artist community, and that it has become that. And, so, and but when the you're train, not there. when the train station wanted to come into Wasaic, it would have blown up the little tiny Hamlet of Wasaic. We're and the media didn't want it either. We're it would talking have about your situation. We're talking about one turning right, intersection. Right, okay. The train station ended up 
where it had minimal impact, which is where we are, which is why it makes sense for, for us to find what this place wants to be that, that, that wins. It's a success for everybody. Every one of you can go, okay, went from problem to success. We're willing to, to build towards that. I'd love to have conversations that are maybe m more informative and two-sided, and that would be something I'd welcome. You uh, have to talk when to, we're able to, to have those conversations. Fenton, John Fenton first. Yeah, we did today. Okay, but we're you having another there, scheduled meeting. Like they're saying, there is there is a huge amount of work that has to be done before you can even have these conversations. I think you need to complete it, 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 the conversation with Mr. Fenton. Correct. And before sure. you start is to figure they, they out. Tend to be interrupted. He's pretty short on time actually worry what you have to do and so on and so forth yeah okay and I think you have to have a conversation with him first yeah we're gonna uh, we're, he, he's uh, discussed uh, um, setting up meetings with some appropriate parties and I've been getting consultation from some amazing folks I just want to say to everyone thank you for your supportive honks and stopping by and waving and showing that it's really not just the two or three people who are complaining about us that we actually have quite a bit of support locally bless you I've been grateful to be able to share that. I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who has been lending their expertise and support. And you know, there's there's a lot. Um, this is a very interesting town. You find out more all the time. Anyway, but we have great things to do together, and I hope you can see us as allies and um, at least heard my uh, my appeal. And and hopefully you'll make good use of um, your time, town's resources, and we'll be able to have more conversations and hopefully fewer uh, like this. Well, that's not going to happen unless you start reading and paying attention to our zoning law and following our zoning law. Right now, you're in violation. Can I, uh, okay. Uh, highway Department, you left. Committee reports. On Highway Department, I wanted to know if we're all in agreement that we can put the Shero in for the Easy Street bid price that everyone's had. A couple weeks to review. Or do we have a commitment to move forward with that grant, which is the reason why we're doing it? What is the deadline for that? It's in August. August. Late August. Yeah. August. Um, are you going to work with Mike Haggerty or on your yes. own? You're going to work with Mike Haggerty. I think that four hundred, five hundred dollars is, is an investment that would be a, a good investment going to actually apply for the last round of the enhancement funds. Actually, Stanley was going to talk to the county, I believe. The county has uh, another somebody else, I think, that's going to do it also. So, but. But is it a go? Uh, I'll talk to him. Darlene. Hmm? I didn't hear you. Is, are you in favor of going forward based upon the pricing that we received? from Easy Street, the quote for the Sharrows on Mechanic Street. But that's, what if we don't get the grant? Oh, you Then we will still have Sharrows on Mechanic Street that would indicate to drivers on Mechanic Street between the rail trail and 343 that they should be more cognizant that they are sharing the road with bicyclists. I yeah. think it's a no-brain yeah. investment right. because in fact, if you want the bicyclists to come into town and yes. use the bicycle racks. They need racks to know the way. Yeah. Mm. Give them yes, a I am. safer yeah. way of getting into town. Mm. And, and Victoria, do you think we should go ahead? Well, we have, well, we have one bid. It, it's from the um, state bid. State bid. It's, state it's bid a state price. bid. Sure. How much is that? Just under five hundred. Yeah, five hundred dollars. Under five hundred dollars. It well, it's not a state bid. I don't think it's a. Let me, I, I have no problem doing it, but let me just double check with Stanley. All right. Uh, because I know he he did talk. He was talking. That to was one of about that was the vendor that he did recommend though. Oh, Easy Street. When I spoke to him. Yeah. Oh, you spoke to him. Yeah. Stanley. Yeah. When oh, when I first no started this. Yep. Okay. Victoria. Yes. Okay. So make a motion. Spend. Uh, make a motion. We spend. Up to five hundred dollars. Up to, to five hundred dollars doing the uh, sh was the Sheryls. Sheryls. Sheryls on uh, Mechanic Street. A second. Councilman Reamer. Yes. Councilman Prody. Yes. Supervisor Flood. Yes. Councilman Hetzelberger. Yes. And Councilman Doyle. Yes. Committee reports. We have recreation. Um, we have um, some issues um, at Big Ben Park. 
uh, we, uh, about uh, a few weeks ago, we had a problem where we didn't have any power on uh, morning that <clears throat> we were going to have several baseball games. Um, I called the only uh, electrician I could find on a Saturday morning was um, Berl uh, Tim Burlinghoff, and he came down. It was a minor problem, but then he went through the building, and we had uh, several issues that are code violations. Apparently, somewhere along the line, uh, um, the roof was repaired, and a new roof was put on, and the uh, electrical in there that was um, temporarily fixed for the repair um, wasn't, um, an electrician didn't go in after and put all the wiring back where it was supposed to. So right now we have some electrical code violations. Um, I have an estimate from um, Tim Berlinghoff is $4,264, but he's unable to do the work now, so John Lacurdo said he would be able to do it. Um, this is uh, an emergency situation. We've got um, bare wires up in the attic and um, a lot of loose wires and a lot of um, issues there. So we really need to um, have everything fixed have the main as circuits soon as possible. Been, have, have the main circuits been turned off so they're not live? No, not right now. I think um, I sent the pictures to everyone. So is the colonel yeah. the there working? Well, he will. Next week he'll come in and he'll fix everything. Can we turn the circuit, the, the main circuit breakers off so those wires aren't live in right. the interim? Yeah. Well, the, it is off when, you know, when they're not there. I mean, it isn't like there's going to be a fire. There's just wires that need so to be put where they're supposed to. Well, I understand it's pretty bad. Wires are hanging all over. Yeah, the I saw the photos myself. Well, we can, yeah, we can just scary. turn everything off down. and just shut it down. Yeah. Because he, he'll, uh, he'll be in there first, um, the first part of next week. Yeah, let's just make sure it stays off until they get in there to, that would be her horrific. We've had a lot of problems here with the electric lately. Uh, you know, the, the wires were hanging off the pole, the boxes were hanging off the, from the light, they were unlocked, so... Uh, Those were fixed, these are inside the building. I know, I know, they were fixed, but we've had some issues, you know, they, they, the kids can get in there, they can get electrocuted, there's no question. So, I don't know if the rec commission or whoever's going to oversee that thing needs to get uh, on the ball with that thing down there. It's, uh, and I also got a call from the health department. Well, they're the ones, I'm sorry, go ahead. Someone applied to put a restaurant Cafe. That's yeah, I don't. I sent an email. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know who um, did that. Where that came from. So. Well, Christine's the one that um, Ford is the one that met with Burlinghoff and went through the building and found all the issues, and documented them and sent us sent us the pictures. That was that was very good of her to document it like that. Uh, the other it. issue they have down there are trees. Um, because uh, the trees are hanging over some of the lights. And um, also a lot of the trees, uh, the way the branches are, it takes away some of the parking also. So the person that got the bid for the town to do tree work was Lee's Trees. And they came and gave us an estimate for cut back and prune all trees around field lights, safely prune all trees near playground and access road. And their um, bid was four thousand two hundred dollars, and they're the company that, you know, um, that highway that got the bid for highway. They were doing uh, like a flat rate of fifteen hundred, thirteen hundred dollars, I think, per day. Fourteen hundred. Fourteen hundred. Fourteen hundred a day. Fourteen hundred a day. For the, day. For the uh, hi uh, highway. Yeah. So is this something that the we same couldn't thing? And so they estimate it's a couple of days' work or something? Uh, two to three right. days' work. Two to three days' work. So he's doing uh, uh, the $1,400 yes. per day bid. Okay. Yes. I'll make a motion to go ahead with the uh, tree, tree trimming into high, or the uh, recreation department. Well, we do yeah, the need two trimming, bids, the tree trimming and No, the he's, uh, he's already on. Oh, because he's already been he's accepted. Already been. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. At that rate, right. Right. The tree trimming and the electrical. And we're just looking for straight shaping because... Right. Correct. All right. And we're doing the electrical too? Yeah. Okay. I'll... I'll we need to... Uh, amend my motion to add the electrical work also. That's emergency repair. Yeah. 
I second. Did, did um, I'm sorry, did John give us any sense of what he would charge? I mean, are we talking about the same kind of ballpark? Yes. Okay. Councilwoman Reamer? Yes. Councilwoman Prody? Yes. Councilwoman Hitzelberger? Yes. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. And Supervisor Flood? Yes. And on April 27th, um, they had a group photo done of all the baseball players. I saw it on the website. It's very good. And very this has nice. been given to the town so that we can Display. put it up in town hall. Huh. Be very nice. Thank you, Christine. I believe she organized that. Yes, on. she did. Yeah, That's framed. fantastic. It's beautiful. Yeah, we can have it framed and put up in the town hall. She worked hard on that. That's cool. Very, very nice. Uh, the Town of Amenia Senior Chicken Barbecue will be held at the Wasag Firehouse on Saturday, August 10th from 12 to 3. Residents attending must be age 55 or older. Reservations are required. Please call Orpha Thomas at 845-877-0492 to register. The deadline for making a reservation is Sunday, July 28th, and to date we have 87 people signed wow. up. Fantastic. Uh, we also... Um, the uh, Senior Trip Committee has uh, planned a trip to the AquaTurf Club Tuesday, August 20th uh, from 11.30 to 3.30 um, at $40 a person. Someone will be down at Tally Ho next week. Um, if uh, you're interested, you can uh, call Charlene um, Pollinger at 373-9650 and we'll be uh, setting up a time at uh, Tally Ho Park next week for people to sign up for the trip. And that's all I have for recreation. Can you give an update on the Enhancement Committee's garden tour? Or do you want me to quickly? Oh, it's the Garden Club of Mania, separate and distinct from the oh. Enhancement Committee. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Enhancement Committee volunteers will be proud to support the Garden Club of Amenia's, uh, there you go, uh, annual tour. That's Saturday, July 13th, rain or shine. It's going to be great. They have 14 gardens, I believe, displayed. 15. 15 gardens. Pick um, the ones you want. And it's $20 per person. Kids are free, as I recall. <laughs> and we're having the... Wine and cheese. Wine and cheese on Friday. Prior, you can go uh, to George Fenn's place on Mead Farm on Perry's Corner Road and purchase your tickets in advance. And if you're volunteering, you can pick up your packets that you'll need for hosting your garden uh, that night. So that's the wine and cheese is free. You can preview the beautiful garden at George Fenn's place. And everybody should come out and support this because it helps with the plantings in town. Five to seven. Five to seven p.m. Thank you. 224 Perry's Corner Road. Great. And you can buy your tickets on PayPal, which actually people have been doing, so that's been fantastic. And this is a preview of George's farm. He is our feature garden this year. And what, what two gardens were just on a tour for the conservation in Armenia? For open days, uh, Jade Hill was on the tour, and um, Broccoli Hall has been doing concert on. That's last Sunday. Was it last weekend that you did it? Last weekend was Jade Jade Hill. Right. So that that's an honor to be asked to do that. Correct? It's a very huge honor. Yeah. Right. For you, both you have to be. I mean, you to be. Uh, there's three in to total. Be, Mead there's Hill. three total. Uh, Mead Farmhouse, Broccoli Hall, and Jade Hill are all. National Kudos um, Conservation those, Gardens. Those, I, I've been to Jade Hill and I've been to uh, actually all of them. It's beautiful. They're beautiful. well worth it. And new uh, Churchill Gardens is back on Churchill the tour. If you haven't back. been there, it is phenomenal. They're not always on the tour. So Kildo But it's great there. that Amenia has beautiful. three gardens that are in the uh, conservation. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know the name of the. the uh, National It's National the Garden Conservancy. Conservancy. Right. I know that, uh, there are people in the restaurant from all over the. The county in Westchester, and we're here looking at them, so it's a nice day. They yeah, have a big, big draw. deal. Yeah, it's very, very big deal. deal. And Dolores Holland's uh, uh, bamboo, the East West um, Bamboo Farm and Garden will be 
back on the tour after a, a, a too lengthy absence. Good. So Box, that will be Boxall out in Smithfield. Box fabulous. Sam Browns. And we have a new garden out, uh, Smithfield Cottage up on Moedock Road. Uh, that's Vauxhall. Vauxhall also in Smithfield. So those are two gardens mm -hmm. we have in Smithfield this year. And don't worry, Vicki, we have two in Wasaic. We have, we have Never Rest in Phantoms Rock, so both ends. These, uh, on this tour? On this tour. Really? Yeah. Good. Don't we have Weebatuck Mill? We also have, oh, three, three in, in, in Wasaic. Let me tell you, we're gardening in Wasaic. <laughs> okay. Is, is <laughs> Back to you, Darlene. We need another one in Smithfield Valley. Is the aquaponic then. thing on this year? The aquaponics, uh, uh, Old Forge Organics will be on um, this year. And um, also the Wasaic Community Farm. There will be the technical garden along with the Old Forge Organics. They did suffer a little bit during those heavy rains mm. last week. They had some uh, really bad, really bad flooding down there, but they're going to pull it off. Mm. Great. Any other committees? Nope. Uh, Town Clerk's report. Thank you. Before I start with the Town Clerk's report, I have a quick court report. On September 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th, Judge Devine will be attending the annual fall conference in Lake Placid. In October 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th, I'll be attending the annual conference in Albany. Um, I don't know if we need an official motion or just mention it in the minutes that we're attending our classes it's in the budget. Uh, and for the town clerk's report, 90% of the employees and the town volunteers have returned the signed acceptable use policy. So those of you that have received a recent mailing from Patty, please take note that we are keeping track of those that are being returned and reporting to Gretchen that we're only 10% away from being 100% compliant. Um, one of the questions came up is that they're not using those email addresses and I do ask that you still return that because you have been assigned an email address. So you could potentially use your email. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but please have them return it and then after we're done getting all the acceptable use policies done, then we'll deal with the who prefers to be contacted via mail, who prefers to be contacted via email method because you know, some people just don't work through email and that's perfectly fine uh, on August 14th starts the dough permits they go on sale on July 8th through the 19th I received a letter from the county indicating that they are going to be doing work on County Route 105 St. Patch Road they are doing a culvert replacement so just watch and follow the road sign detours on July 1st we had some rain here at the town hall that visited us in a storeroom, which brought us to have a visit from Linda Ball. She is our Region 9 um, archives individual. And what she has done is she sent us an email and a um, proposed resolution regarding records management um, officer. And once I just handed it out tonight, so if you guys want to look at it, and then the next meeting, if we can go ahead and approve that. Once I have that resolution, she's given me the forms necessary to destroy um, town records and those 16 boxes that are upstairs in the hall that are drying out, I can properly destroy. So we have a resolution to um, do that and then we can go ahead and destroy them. Main Street Grant Progress. I have a letter from uh, Mike Haggerty here. Uh, I'm attending um, a grant workshop on the Consolidated Funding Application at Dutch Community College tonight. I will report back to you about this meeting when you meet on Tuesday, July 16th at 8 a.m. to discuss the Main Street Grant. The Main Street Subcommittee met on Tuesday, July 9th to discuss the progress of the Main Street Grant. The Amenia Library has obtained two quotes from the proposed project to install storm windows, a new sign lighting, a new painting scheme for the building's front sign. Claire Houlihan requested that she be considered for more of a grant since she has already invested more than 61000 in building and renovations, including interior electrical upgrades, painting and roof repairs. She also has obtained two quotes re required for the new painting of the exterior. Mr. Patel decided he did not want to pursue funding for the new facade 
but will still be interested in being reimbursed for some of the work which is already completed. The subcommittee decided to, that the town should speak to Mr. Patel one more time to see if we could possibly move ahead with reimbursing him while seeking to persuade him to do the facade. The subcommittee also felt it was necessary to open up the process to two new businesses who may be interested in participating. John Fenton approached four brothers who were very interested in working with the grant, with the town for the grant. I gave them an application and they will fill it out. The town must, su must submit a detailed scope of work, including an itemized budget for the streetscape project. I am also developing clear scopes of work for participating <coughs> projects, working to finalize grant agreements, reviewing bid quotes, following up with the SHPO, developing projects, set up forms, and environmental checklists for each. Um, Reviewing big quotes, following up with the SHPO, developing project set up forms and environmental checklists for each report. I held a conference call with Aaron Keene of the New York State Office of Community Renewal and Supervisor Flood on Tuesday and working closely with the state to complete these tax tasks in the next week. Please feel free to call me if you have any questions. Uh, when we had this conference call, the state requirements are very, very strict for these. Uh, they will all, each project has to have a SHPO letter. Each project must be uh, fully documented, fully vetted by the state of New York before any funds are uh, given. Um, so they need to see all these projects first. Um, Patel, they, Mr. Patel, they did say that we should probably work with him a little bit to see if we can get some of this done and uh, get him to do the facade. They also felt that we should open it up to other, other buildings and, and uh, see if we can get other people. Now, do we have to advertise for that? Yeah, but uh, I think we can do We're it with a, time. like a public meeting on Tuesday, okay. you know, public forum meeting. So that should be enough, I would think. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't know how many more people we're going to get. So at this point. Well, I think people should know if they're interested. They got to be there Tuesday morning at eight o'clock. Um, we're running out of time. But it's also a very targeted area, so it's just not anybody who's no. available. It has to be on East Main Street or right in the vicinity yes. of, of between yeah. Mechanic Street and uh, four, 343. So Four Brothers Corner there, that's, yeah. that would be nice to do something there if they're interested. What are they thinking of doing there? I have no idea. No, Mike, Mike met with them, I guess. So I don't know. Informational technology review. Um, the only thing I wanted to talk about this evening for our public service announcement is data backup. Um, if you'll notice, I'm working with a pad of paper tonight, and I would I would just make this recommendation quite seriously that you back up your computer, back it up to a USB stick, back it up to a CD. If something's really important to you, print it out or write it down on a piece of paper because computers do crash and data does get lost. So in order to avoid um, losing data and having to go through hours of restoring data, uh, run consistent backups of your data. And that is my IT input for the evening because we already covered the we acceptable use. We are fully use. backed up here, right? Correct. Yes, and we actually uh, got a uh, approvals for the uh, additional tapes to put in the cycle so we could grandfather out the tape archival. It gives us a longer span of, res of reserved data. And some of it's in the cloud, right? Some of it is, they do store in the cloud. Yeah, it is stored up on a, a remote disk, yes. A remote disk somewhere. Mm -hmm. I think there are two other sites that they store. They back up the stuff. Yep, Good. that's all taken care of and documented. Uh, the Wasek Trail to Train, I received the final um, documents for this. Mm -hmm. Did so we finalize the parking with uh, Pauline Corp? I, I sent Dan Breyer a uh, draft. It seems to think we only needed a draft, not an executed agreement okay. with Pauline Corp. So he was going away. Um, I haven't heard anything back. He just wanted it to submit okay. with the proposal with the to proposal. DOT. Yeah, well, that's why I had you do it. So, but so I did. I did uh, send that to him, and I think I CC you and Bill. Um, mm -hmm. I'll follow up with him. I can't remember when he said he was coming back. Okay. Um, 
It may have been sometime this week. Okay, so we've taken care of that because that was the only thing that we needed to do. Well, correct. And as long as assuming that's approved, then right. at some point we'll have to, to get it executed. Okay. Um, but the, the, you know, it was submitted in a form to, for DOT to review. Okay. Because that was the only thing I think that was, that we needed to add to the um, draft design report that goes to the DOT was the parking agreement. Okay. Okay, I'll just read this letter. David Weiss, PE, design approval request memo, pin 8780.40, Wasaic Trail to Train, Town of Armenia, Dutchess County, June 28, 2013. Location cost. The project involves the construction of 3,500 linear feet, 0.66 mile long, pedestrian bicycle path extending from the Hamlet of Wasaic to the Wasaic Metro North Railroad Station. Train station also serving as an extension of the existing Harm Valley Rail Trail. The proposed path will be maintained by the Town of Armenia. The project's construction cost is estimated at 667000 with right of way acquisition required as outlined in section 11.C.1.1. Uh, in uh, Appendix N of the attached final design report, the project is on the Poughkeepsie Dutchess County Transportation Improvement Plan TIP. Adopted uh, September 30th, 2013. The project will be funded by the Transportation Enhancement Program. Funds with 80% being funded, uh, federally funded, and remaining 20% share, 20 share covered by a Greenway grant and local funding. Alternative, alternative dis uh, description, the, the preferred alternative provides a 10-foot wide paved shared use path running parallel to New York State Route 22 in the Metro North. Railroad Harlem Line, a two-foot shoulder area on each side of the bikeway will be provided in all areas of the project where it is feasible. Access to the shared use path will be provided at the northern end and southern termini of the, of the path via at, at grade crossings. The preferred alternative is described in detail in Chapter 3 of the attached final design report dated June 2013. Standards and design ex exceptions. The design is consistent with the standards listed in 2012 AAS HTO guide for development of bicycle facilities. The project area is rural and the design elements are based on a 20 mile design speed which is consistent with the ge geographic conditions and anticipated operating, oper operating speed. Justification of the non-standard shoulder which is provided in section 11.c.1.a.1 as well as non-standard feature justification form included as appendix C of the attached final design report. Traffic control plans, construction of the right-of-way fence will be coordinated with MNRR and required a force account for working within MTA right-of-way. Street traffic will not be affected as a result of this project. Environmental determination. The town of Amin has classified the project as a type one action and acting as lead agency completed a seeker full environmental assessment form with a coordinated review. It was determined that this project will not have any significant adverse environmental impacts and a negative declaration was passed on April 1st, 2013. All related secret materials are included in Appendix H of the attached final design report. This, the project is classified as a pro pro programmatic categorical exclusion with documentation based on NEPA Checklist in uh, Appendix J of the attached final design report. Uh, procedurally, this, this project was progressed using a New York State DOT, locally administered federal aid procedures manual. All requirements requires that request, God, I can't speak to uh, Requests with to these actions and approvals have been met. Independent quality control reviews have been accomplished when the work is consistent with established standards, policies, regulations, and procedures, except as otherwise noted and explained in this memo. Request for approval. Uh, please indicate your design approval and approval of non-standard shoulder width by signing of this memorandum. I approve the, the uh, preferred alternative as described in the attached final design report. Uh, I had given uh, Dave and Marty a copy of the last report. Have you heard anything from them? No. No, I just brought back mine. Right. 
<clears throat> Dave's been away, but I would think we Dave should, should hear probably from take them. a look at that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Before we sign this thing. I only have one thought. Um, sounds like it's six hundred sixty-seven thousand dollars for construction alone, and at our public at our meeting that we'd had about a year ago, in my notes, I had 717000 so it's actually gone down 40000 I mean, does that sound consistent with what, after all this yes. study, yeah. it's actually gone down in price? Yes. Okay. It'll probably drop further, I would think. You know, the, the landfill was estimated at, what, $10 million? Right. It but we, nobody knows anything until it goes out to bid. Until it goes right. out to bid. But this is based on the design that right. they created. Right. Okay. Right. Is that it for that? Uh -huh. um, so we did finish our survey for the landfill. Thank you for reminding me, Bill. And we did have a first place uh, nominated name nominated by everybody who voted. So y'all were cc'd on every single email, right, Vicky? Yeah. <laughs> I did my best to keep up with it. Um, so you all know the answer and the question that I put before you is do we accept the name that the residents of the town of Amenia would like for our working name for this new park? I'm yes, okay. Yes or no? Well, I, I assume it's Thomas Young. Oh. Yes, it is. Oh. Okay. Yes, Mr. I mean, Young. that's what my tally was, but I but That's exactly I don't it. Okay. So are we all for Thomas Young as our working name for this park? What was the name? Thomas Young. Thomas Young. The man who named Amenia finally gets something yeah. named after him. And that's what the residents want. Yeah. How many voted? Uh, we had 97 votes. Yeah. I thought it was a good Which I thought was a I very mean, good some names turnout. I hadn't heard of. There was some creative names. <laughs> yeah. One of them was Park Place. I thought that was kind of <laughs> right next to Boardwalk. Yeah. So I make a resolution that we now refer to the old landfill. Amenia Landfill. Amenia Landfill as Thomas, Thomas Young, Young Park. Park. I think it's appropriate. Yeah. Second that. Unless there's a donor willing to come forward with quite a bit of money to make it into a beautiful amphitheater or yes. dog park or something, we we'll could, put we in a consider. new resolution. Yeah, yeah. We'll <laughs> consider your name on that park. Yeah. Can we need a roll call, please. Well, I need somebody Council to second it. Oh, she did. Councilman oh, Reimer okay. did. Great, great. Councilman okay. Reimer? What? You seconded it, so yes. now I'm going to take roll call. Oh, yes. <laughs> Councilman Brody? Yes. Councilman Hitzelberger? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. Supervisor Fly? Yes. And to continue with this uh, landfill closure, uh, as you, if you look at it now, the cap is pretty well done. Mm -hmm. uh, they're putting the final coat, the, the sand on, and then the topsoil will <coughs> on that. And they're saying they were supposed to be done the, the middle of this month, but it's not going to Looks like things not going to happen. But, uh, uh, Another month, six weeks, they should be finished. They're scheduled to be done uh, the middle of July. It looks like it's going to be another month because of the rain. So, it, and then uh, from what I understand, it has to sit for, they'll seed it this year and they'll clean it, whatever has to be done, and then we cannot use it until next year. So it's not usable until the DEC signs off and so on and so forth. So we did. They are working with the financing still. Uh, I haven't had a conversation with Liz yet. We're still uh, uh, slugging out the final numbers with the contractors and so on and so forth. So that's where, that's where we're at with that. So that's being done. So is she going to come again and do another to catch us up with everything? Uh, with the final come. numbers? When she when we're ready, yeah. 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 Sure. We should be putting in uh, thinking about our budget numbers for August. Is that uh, you're going to put a deadline for getting budget worksheets to yeah. the committees and mm -hmm. those who are involved in mm -hmm. preparing the budget? Okay. Yep, we'll start soon. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, 
We have one res two resolutions, three resolutions. So what is this one here? Forty six. A resolution providing for the creation of a records management program in the town of Amini, whereas local government records and document policies, activities, and decisions to provide continuity with excuse me, past operations to illustrate the evolution of uh, government and its services, reflect the interaction between government and individuals, and, pr and protect the citizens of the rights of citizens, and whereas it is desirable to have a records management program in place on a continuing basis, and whereas the Records management officer has undertaken a program for the establishment of a local uh, government records management program and local government archives. And whereas these objectives are met, achieved by the official adoption of a comprehensive records management program. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the town board hereby adopt the following records management program. Bill, can I stop you? Yeah. I've read through this and I don't think it has enough oversight to keep us okay. safe. So, if we could take a a week to look at that and a, a meeting cycle to look at that. Okay. Can I just okay? ask that you email your recommendations to Absolutely. me? Absolutely. And then I will send them to Linda Bull at the county because this That would she, be terrific. She just emailed this to me because this is what was supposed to have been done in 2001 and 2002. The MU1 was adopted, which is the schedule on destruction, uh -huh. and couldn't find it, but she says that um, she reviewed the records and then she indicated that the town clerk was first appointed for records management officer in 1951. The M1 retention schedule was adopted in 2001 and an inventory grant that I worked on with Julia for 2001-2002 and the records management resolution proposed as a consultant on the grant would have been submitted in June of 2002. If you're unable to locate it, which we went through one through four, it was not in there. Um, and then she says that it's possible that the MU one thing might have just been in the minutes and not a formal resolution. In order to apply for the first grant, they would have had to adopt it. Like I indicated yesterday, many governments adopted it in 1989 when it first came out. Um, anywhere, here's the format and the management resolution. It was great meeting, and then it goes on. Right. So I, I just printed what she gave me. So I have no problems. I just want to make records upstairs longer. I just want to. It's not a question of keeping them longer. It's a question of when we sign them out for destruction, mm -hmm. that that portion is very, very specifically and well documented There's because- There's a form that she gave me that is not part of this resolution. If you'd like, I can you know, send you both. There's a two-part That would be helpful. There's a form that I would have to fill out and sign to it yeah. in order for Because us to that's where the litigation yeah, can and get us, and that's what I just want to double check on. That you know, you, you yeah. weren't here during the rainstorm, so I guess that's where we miss you and I miss each other. So I was a rained form out. That um, she sent with it. So mm -hmm. if you want to make it wait, that's fine. I have no problems. It's just one meeting. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's fine with me. So just email me your concerns, and then I will send them to Linda Bolt. That way, sure. Because this is her project, and she oversees me on this. So I, I don't. I would be happy to shoot you out an email. Okay. Thank you very much, Don Marie. Okay. Resolution number. Still 46. Of 2013 annual Gabby Farkas Memorial Softball Tournament, whereas the Amenia Fire Company has scheduled its second annual Gabby Farkas Memorial Softball Tournament for August 16, 2013 through August 18, 2013, and whereas the, the Amenia Fire Company has requested the town board rescind the open container law, and whereas the Amenia Fire Company has requested that the town board authorize the hiring constables as needed for a softball tournament, and now therefore be it resolved that the town of me hereby rescinds the open container law for Beacon Park in, in addition to authorizing the hiring of constables as needed for the event. Be it resolved that this resolution shall become effective immediately. I make that motion. I'll second it. Supervisor Flood. Yes. Councilman Prody. Yes. Councilman Doyle. Yes. Councilman Raymer. Yes. Councilman Hitzelberger. Yes. Resolution 42. You ready? Yeah, 47. Oh, 47. Numbers. The whereas the town of Amenia has adopted local law number three of 2007, establishing the powers and duties of the councilors, and whereas section 10.7 of the law authorized the town board to adopt a resolution granting special duties to the town council upon a determination that assessment of those special duties 
it's appropriate and that it is consistent with the scope of the town council's powers and duties as peace officers. And whereas the second annual Gabby Farkas Memorial Softball Tournament is scheduled to be conducted by the town of Armenia from August 16th, 2013 through August 18th, 2013, and whereas the town board concludes that it would be in best interest of the town of Armenia and the public health and welfare for the town councils to assist the parking and traffic control for this event and to generally control Beekman Park grounds and surrounding area during the event. And now therefore we resolve that the town board hereby grants the town councils of special duties enumerated in sections 107 C D E F and G of the Town of Amenia Town Code during the annual softball tournament of August 16, 2013 through August 18, 2013, including the period of time prior to and after the event necessary to patrol the area for safety and to assist in controlling and directing the parking and traffic generated by this event. And it is further resolved that the town board hereby authorize the town councils to carry a firearm as authorized by section 10.6 of the town immediate town code while performing the special duties identified in the resolution where it is further resolved that the immediate fire company shall pay for the costs associated with the town council providing the services identified in this resolution. I make that motion. And second. Supervisor Flood? Yes. Councilman Brody? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Reamer? Yes. Councilman Hitzelberger? Yes. The supervisor's report. As you have heard, we did have a leak in the roof over the uh, record room. From my, uh, from my being told from the contractor that the uh, underneath the slate, the roof, the rubber roof slit, there was a slit in the roof. Um, so they did, they repaired it, that it will be fixed shortly. The insurance company's been here. Oh, good. The adjusters have been here and looked at it and so on and so forth. I don't know if we're gonna get what we're gonna get paid for, but they're gonna pick up some of the cost of this. Oh, I bet you they would. We also got it's the, um, right, it's damaged. Yeah. And the, uh, we did get the, um, the guarantees on the new roof that were replaced. So I'm going to give that to Dawn. She can keep that in the records so that you'll have for the future. I think there's a 20 or 30 year guarantee on the roof. That's good. And the flat roof of the, the uh, gym roof was done. The two roofs on the hallway here were done. Mm -hmm. And the two roofs in the front were done. They're all insulated, pitched. This one was pitched almost a foot. Yeah, the, they are uh, flat no more. They are no more That's flat. That's a big, right. big improvement. So. I think if we could make that note in the minutes just for the record so <clears> that <throat> people henceforth would right. real we realize have, there's a warranty on these correct. roofs. And that's all layers of the roof, not just the, the roof place. Right, all the flat roofs, right, that they repaired. Great. So we had all, all new fascias, all new uh, rubber roofing, and all new insulation under all the flat roofs. Huge so investment, a huge investment. improvement, yep. but that's good, the right thing to do. Um, uh, we've got an MM of uh, An e uh, email from uh, County Executive Molinero that the uh, tax sales tax agreement between the county and the, and the cities of Beacon and Poughkeepsie was adopted. So the, they have guaranteed that we will get our, our um, tax funds that we get. And actually we're up. Oh, yeah. Our mortgage taxes were up. So that's, that's been done. Uh, just um, That's all I've got. So town board comments. I think I mentioned um, once before we sort of uh, at one of our meetings talked about uh, um, a weather vane for the cupola, and we've had some suggestions when we were doing the music hall, um, doing a, a G clef and highlighting it. Uh, but a, a resident has donated a copper eagle, uh, which came off a flagpole and it would need to be um, 
fabricated to go on the cupola. And I don't know, in fact, if, it, if we have on the cupola the, the place to put this. Uh, so, Did you determine if the scale for that was right? I know that was one thing you wanted to look into. It's, it's not as big as I thought it was. So as far as the scale, it's probably more suited for the flagpole that it came from. Um, but it needs, it has a, a, a point on it that, you know, when it's on a flagpole, it's about 32 inches wide on the wing spread of the eagle. It's copper, it's beautiful. Um, but it's meant to rotate so that it doesn't get the resistance right. from the wind. That it goes, it should have a race on it with uh, ball bearings mm -hmm. so that as the wind blows, it could rotate. Um, but as far as the scale, it may be not applicable for the uh, cupola. I don't know. I'll bring it in here and we can talk about it. I'll bring it in for the next meeting. Yeah, I think that was the most generous donation. I'd really like to see it used. Yes. In a p place where it will show its best qualities. Yeah, and it's it's beautiful. It's handmade copper, um, and it's, it came from Yonkers on a flagpole in Yonkers. So I'll tell you more about it when it, when it arrives. Great. I was going to say that we have uh, currently $1,470 in grants for our uh, dance program coming up, $470 from New York State Office of Children and Family Services, $900 from New York State Council on the Arts Decentralization Program, and what, excuse me, $100 private donation from a Millerton resident. So um, very glad to see that. We're still waiting for one more grant that should be announced mid-July. I know the people have already received some letters who did not receive New York's um, Berkshire Taconic Community Foundation's um, Northeast Duchess Fund, so I'm hopeful that that means, since we haven't received a letter to my knowledge, that we are hopefully still in the running, so that would be good. I was considering a talent show um, that Peter Cascone and I had kind of considered um, kind of as a, a different kind of use of the, of the auditorium. And I was thinking if there's still time, maybe we could do it uh, Sunday, August, um, Sunday, September 8th at 2 p.m. And we could have some tryouts and offer it to any, anybody, um, no age limit, but I was imagining kids in particular because I know there's a garage band that's going on on Sheffield Road and there's um, my daughter who plays the guitar and likes to sing you know just anywhere on the map uh, there's um, drummers there's a dance studio in town there are cheerleaders are they cheerleading yes. in the fall yes they have a camp coming up in the third week of August and then they are going to start up again so no, they may have something to show us by September. I think it's just really cute and it would use it. And the real reason, I'm just a fundraiser at heart, but the real reason is to try and raise some funds for Gridley Chapel, which is still trying to repair its slate roof. So I thought if you charge $5 per person and let the kids perform for free, you could hire a sound system. Jim Devine would probably do a sound system for a couple hundred dollars and the rest would go towards the restoration of the Gridley Chapel. Um, so I would get volunteers to try and organize that. Does that fit with the use that we had in mind of using the, I don't see any infrastructure needed other than the auditorium and maybe going back and forth to the gym if the cheerleaders needed their special mats. But maybe, you know, just informally. It's very informal, very fun just to do it. And if you had all the parents who have to pay to come to see their child, you know, we'd do it, right? But it could also be adults. It could be somebody doing a solo, you know, on the flute or something like that. Who knows? A yoga teacher just demonstrating, you know, some of his yoga talent. I don't know. I just think it would be fun. Do you think the Recreation Committee would sponsor you so you could get insurance for your event? Well, I think we are insured. Yeah. When we do have insurance, we pay a lot of money for insurance. So I think sure. the more we use the building, 
the Just more, checking. yeah, I, I, I don't see any problem with insurance, but are there any other issues that anybody could think of? Just a uh, schedule conflict, if there's right. anything else going on, I mean, that would be the only thing. Well, it's after <coughs> men's basketball, so she should be good. Okay. The auditorium. We can take them out a little early. Are they back and in And you don't yet? have a lecture? No. September, he's going to start. Garden lecture? That weekend. Uh, garden okay. lecture. Is AJ going to start in there? They don't no, we're not reserved for that. AJ, is he going back in there? I don't know. I know he submitted a letter, but that went to rep. And those were Saturdays. Yeah. Well, that's Sunday. Uh, a Sunday, we would do it at 2 p.m., that sort of thing. And then I just have heard lots of good uh, vibes from inside and outside the community about the drive-in, so I wish them well in their trial month of drive-in shows. I was there today. They're, uh, they're working hard. They're working hard. Oh. They're trying. The weather's really knocked them back a little bit. They're going. They were going to try to open this week, but I don't think it's going to make it this week. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. It'll be next week. We're very Hopefully. informal in Amenia. <laughs> Keep tuned, tuned yeah. in for when it actually opens. It's a big deal. I think it, I think it would draw people from. If we can put more around. people downtown in media, that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, that's what I say. It's just yeah, it's a good thing. more more traffic, things right. will be discovered, new ideas will come about. for doing. You see other a lot. Things. There's a lot more traffic. There's a lot more yeah. pedestrian traffic on uh, 343 and so on and so forth. There's a lot, and then Cumberland. I think they're getting ready to start that. That's going to start here pretty soon. They're going to. Uh, Revamp that building. I think that I think they're almost done with the planning board. That's going to be all redone. One thing I forgot to mention: um, I met with Carl Renia and Marvin Windows and Anderson Windows. I got a historic photograph of the front of the building, and the original windows were nine over nine divided oh, lights. Oh wow! Please. Yeah. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. So yeah. I Very said, give us a historic. give us a quote with that. Um, you know, and see where we are if we have to do it in phases, but it's it's beautiful, the old photograph from the 40s. So I think it was also your graduating class. And Charlotte was valedictorian, yeah. I think, of your class. Yeah. Really? So um, from that photograph, I got a picture of the original lights on either side of the door for the music hall, so now I can order those. I've been around the block on trying to think what to do you know, that would be appropriate, but why not go back to the original lights? So the, there's a place in Great Barrington that has uh, uh, vintage lighting. Oh, yeah. They buy old fixtures and they rewire them and they're all up to code. So I'll That's go up there exciting. and see if we can get Where's some. Where's the Great Barrington? In, in Great Barrington? Yeah. You know the place? Yep. It's right after the It's right off on the, the main street as you're driving through Great yeah. Barrington, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so you're going to go, you're gonna go find some fixtures for us? Yeah, I'll find some fixtures. We need three, right? Yes, out here. Too. One there, two on the front. Right. I'm also getting nervous about our heating and cooling system. Yep. Is there any? Uh, I talked to Troy Boiler the other day to give me a quote on replacing the boilers, uh, so that we have a comparison for the. Good. Two uh, quotes. Yeah. To replace what we have with what we, the similar into the geothermal, so, and I have to give that to Jonathan so he can. Work his numbers. He does. He has a spreadsheet, that a proposal for us, but he needed some more figures from this, so I should have that next week. What they're trying to do now is is to um, price the uh, asbestos cleanup, in the, as as because the boilers have to be removed, and there there's some of asbestos on both of them, so they have to have them, have them taken of. out of there, right? So that's that's what they're the final quote. Is. Waiting for. So, they so they're going to give us a quote for two boilers, a backup and a regular. They give us. They gave us a quote for one. Okay. So it's um. Mm -hmm. Bottom line. Mm -hmm. Is there any way the current one that has had a little fix could serve as our backup? Or is it too? One is one is shot. Right. So that uh, was done. that's gone. This one, th they said they're surprised it still runs. So yeah. it, it, I don't know what it be what it would cost to refurbish. In, in Jonathan's bid, I think he's got that as being refurbished parts of that, right? Or replacing that with another replacing replacing it with yeah. another boiler. So. Okay. They're both shot, in other words. Pretty much. Okay. 
We could probably limp another year with the old one, maybe, but we'll see. Not if we're going to be a, a FEMA place for people to come, I wouldn't want to limp. Right, so that's what we're, we're waiting for. Once I get the final quote, then Jonathan can run his numbers and we'll, he'll make a formal proposal to the yeah. board. We're, re we're, almost, we're Good. almost ready. Good. Yeah, we met with him once just to, you know, finalize what needed to be in there. And, you know, so we're covered. Just want to make and sure I, it's I, happening. I <laughs> did sure talk to Michael about, he's, he's at the county also today. We're going to talk to Hicks again about applying for some of this uh, state money to help us, to help pay for this. So we can see if we can it's get. It's an economic development, though. No, no, no. Well, if we can, the, the what we've the tried to do is make this a uh, refuge for uh, regional, a regional area that people can come. If it's a resource. It's a or a refuge. A refuge. If the power goes out, or if there's a yeah. storm, or something like that, we can do the, the Red Cross could set up here because it, it would be. Um, it's a a multi whatever shared services. Shared situation. services. Okay. Yeah, if we can because make no, that no case. other town around can do it. So that's what Terry Gibson was suggesting. Correct. Okay. So we're working with Hicks to get that done. So that's great. We'll see what happens. Hopefully, we can get something. Okay. Yeah, I have um, Indian Rock Schoolhouse events. The one-room Indian Rock Schoolhouse on Mygat Road will hold its fourth annual pancake breakfast on Sunday, July 14th, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Breakfast prices per person are seven dollars. Senior six dollars for seniors and children, and children under five are free. This fundraiser helps support the annual educational programs that are held at the schoolhouse for students from Weebatuck Central School District. Other scheduled events at the schoolhouse are the annual meeting and ice cream social on Sunday, August fourth, from one to three p.m., and the annual picnic on Saturday, September twenty-eighth, from ten to three p.m with the theme being Back to the Past. Uh, this year we are honoring the fire departments of Wasayak and Amenia. Any vendors interested in attending should contact Vicki Benjamin at 845-373-8414. Also, I uh, had Mark work on the uh, fountain. It still gets, um, it just needs its filter cleaned on a regular basis, so if you see that the fountain isn't working, give me a call because I don't drive that way normally. Thank you, Marilyn Noe, for alerting me because I just don't, I don't drive during day, daytime hours when it's on. Yeah, it's been off for a while. Also, yeah. the, the weeding is out of control. It's out of control, yeah. Thank you. We need, I just need to know that. Yeah. Thanks. Good news, it's easy to weed when it's been raining like this. I know. The stuff comes right out. All set. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just gonna. I, I, I'm gonna make one comment about the parking. I, I, I just want to get it straightened around and be done. I don't want to argue with Stanley, but I think that we should be able to have a discussion, and that we should have a discussion before a board meeting. And that, that's just my thing. That's it. Shouldn't have to come to this all, all, all the time. I'm, I'm available every day to discuss something, and I think between Victoria and Stanley, if they want to have a meeting, we can have a meeting. And, and, and get this thing organized, straightened around, and that's what I'm after. I just want to get it done. So that's all I've got. And the um, we need a motion to go to an executive session. We have some legal matters that we have to discuss with Ian, and that's why I asked him to come into the meeting tonight. Um, right before the motion, wine and cheese, Friday night, 5 to 7, 224 Perry's Corners Road, for the Hidden Gardens tour, everyone is invited. It is a free event. That's Thank a great you. Night. I'll second Bill's motion. Councilman Reamer. Yes. Councilman uh, Brody. I'm sorry. Yes. Sorry, Dad. It's your budget plan. <laughs> yes. Councilman Hutzenberger. Yes. And Councilman Brody. You're tongue tied. That's unusual. I know it's nice. I'm nice. 